another issue is, you know, Michael talked about how at his institution they're doing genetic profiling on every patient with stage three and four. You will find out if people have other mutations than BRAF. You will find out if they're KIT mutated or NRAS mutated. So Reinhardt, does knowing about the NRAS mutation in what, 15 or 20 percent of the patients impact on your treatment? And have you been involved in any NRAS targeted therapy trials? <laughs> In general, I think we should do more genetic testing. I'm not really the friend of, of uh, complete exon sequencing because this is, this is too time consuming and, and the information is not really helpful. But I think a reasonable targeted sequencing approach would help us. And I'm sure that we will be able to identify a number of uh, mutations in tumor suppressor genes that might be help us to say, uh, uh, how long will be the response duration and we can read really read a lot of out, out of this and we will learn This is what we, we need. We need more information So we have to first to collect it and then bring it together in databases So for the NRAS situation, uh, I think uh, there are a lot of myths around with NRAS So for example that these patients are have a more aggressive disease and I, I'm, I think the data are not so convincing though there are NRAS mutated patients who or have an actually really a good a good behavior, uh, and immunotherapy works nicely. There are even uh, reports that re uh, that um, suggest that they respond better to to immunotherapy. I would say the patients typically are older, so there are other factors involved, like a high mutational burden, and obviously NRAS mutated patients uh, have a good chance to respond to MEK inhibition. This was. Uh, investigated in the NEMO trial and the results uh, the study made the primary endpoint but uh, I think the data are not strong enough to 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 convince us that we should use this so we have to continue I think in uh, a MEK inhibitor could be a good backbone and we have to select other molecules like a CDK4 inhibitor or like a MDM2 inhibitor or anything else maybe based on the on the mutational profile that we see in the individual patient to increase this we haven't heard much about CDK4 plus MEK in that population. I, any information that you have? You know, the combination is quite toxic and uh, uh, it's difficult to manage. And probably um, you should have a genetic basis to do so. Maybe CDK2A mutations or mutations in, in this uh, area would help. Well, there are preclinical data that suggest that the NRAS mutation per se results in a very strong uh, uh, activation of, of cyclin-dependent kinases. So that, that by this, this is, this is justified to do this combination. But uh, I think we, um, we really have to learn more, and for, especially in the clinic. And Axel, is, NRAS, um, is the NRAS mutation a surrogate for someone who's going to do well with immunotherapy? I mean, this was uh, out there several years ago. That was discussed in the frame of the ipilimumab development and that the NRAS patients are doing a bit better. In, in our days, it's not playing an important role. This is a group of beer of wild type patients and there is two clinical trials coming up very soon, uh, two randomized phase three trials to improve, to approve a MEK inhibitor plus in one clinical trial, a PD ligand 1 antibody, in the other clinical trial, a PD 1 antibody. And uh, f they are targeting just the BRA wild type patients, which includes the vast majority of the NRAS mutated patients. So that might be something driving the future. But I wanted to give a very brief comment on combining, you know, uh, MAP kinase pathway inhibitors like BRA MEK with PI3 kinase uh, inhibitors. You know, the data I have seen on triple regimens is not really exciting. The response rate appeared not to be higher, but even a little bit lower than for beer of plus MEK alone, but there's substantial add-on of toxicity. And therefore, you know, it's not the easy task to combine no, three difficult. targeted agents, and I'm not sure if this is the future. I think the future lies in combining targeted therapies with immunotherapies. You know, neglecting immunotherapies for melanoma as a combination of partner, I think is maybe not the wrong, the, the right way in the future. It's my feeling that the field of clinical development of multiple targeted therapies appears to have stagnated. Do you think it's because we're now 
adding immunotherapy to targeted therapy? I believe it's, it's because the immunotherapies are very strong. It's more or less a backbone therapy for metastatic melanoma and also the toxicity issues of targeted agents. But, but the, I think the issue is that we need m a better patient selection. So a good example is uh, BRAF mac combi plus uh, cycling-dependent kinase. So these data have been presented at the ASCO. Uh, and actually, uh, I, I, well, I have treated a number of patients and there were some of them that have uh, extraordinary, uh, exciting and long, long-lasting responses. And I think we, if we do, would do a complete genetic profiling, there would be a good chance that we identify patients like with cycling deamplifications or, or uh, mutations in P15, P16 that really would help us. So I, I think these trials need molecular guidance and then targeted therapy can be further developed.